Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Time for Change Changemaker Story Workshop. We're so thrilled to have you today. My name is Jenna Greenspan. I'm the Director of User Experience at First Book. So all of the emails and invitations to all these exciting things that you get probably every day, every other day come from me and my team. So I'm so glad to see many of you uh, here live with us tonight. Um, this special opportunity is part of our Time for Change initiative that many of you might be familiar with um, that we launched in January with our friends at Ashoka and our partners over at Automa Piget. So we have very special guests with us here from Ashoka today to lead this workshop. Um, and we just wanted to let you know that this is part of a series of books um, on the first book marketplace, specially curated sections, special brand new resources to help you and your students practice um, incredible change maker abilities and flex those change making muscles. Um, so we hope that you enjoy yourselves this, this evening, this afternoon for wherever you're calling in from, that you enjoy this opportunity to uh, learn more and to connect with one another. So with that, I will pass it over to uh, Riley Brooks from Ashoka to take it from here. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining. Um, we're so excited to have you. Um, again, my name is Riley Brooks. I've worked for Ashoka for about three years now, and one of my big roles at Ashoka is helping young people, social entrepreneurs, educators, and any changemaker tell and share their changemaker story. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing here today. And I know all of you are very passionate about books, literature, reading, and so we're here to connect the dots between the stories we read and the stories that we have for ourselves that we want to share out to the world. Um, so this is the Change Maker Story Workshop. We're going to dive both into your personal journey of change as well as the journey your students, your schools, and your communities are going through too. Um, so just a really high level overview of what we'll be doing is we're first going to dive into the power of change maker stories and go a little bit more into what a change maker story is, how it's different than any other story we tell and how it can be valuable for you in your classroom. Um, then we're also going to hear from change makers and their journeys as well, especially starting young and what that meant in the role of educators. Then we're going to explore the stories we see in our schools and classrooms. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about reframing the narrative and the narratives we try to avoid, the narratives we try to tell, and the tools and resources that we have just for you that we will share after this workshop. Um, so with that, I'd love to learn where everyone is logging in from. I know we have educators all across the country. So in the chat, if you could please share where you are um, calling in from. And this workshop will be pretty interactive. So if you want to keep your camera on, have your chat ready, um, we'll be we'll be playing around quite a bit in breakout rooms. So this is a good warm up for us. So I have people from Massachusetts, Delaware, Houston, Texas. I went to school in Houston, so I'm a big H Town fan. California, Illinois, DC, Southern California, awesome, South Carolina. So we have people all around the country. Thank you all so much for joining and taking this time out of your day. Um, Michigan, awesome. Great, so why are you here? Um, so again, the first part of the workshop is we're gonna be understanding the power of changemaker stories and what at value they can add for you in your classrooms and the story of I, which is the story of you. And then we're also gonna be looking around at the story of us. So what are the collective stories we see in our schools and communities? All right, so that being said, to keep getting us warmed up, I would love everyone to take a moment and look at this photo and in the chat, write down the first word or phrase that you're feeling or seeing. What's coming to mind in a word or a phrase by looking at this photo? Seeing clarity, perspective, focus, adventure of the unseen, vision, how to focus, lenses, wonderful. Okay, let's do it again. So, Look, take a look at this photo and in one word or phrase, what are you seeing? So we're having a lot of journey. Bliss. Adventure, peace. Scary, okay, awesome. And last one, 
in one word or phrase, what comes to mind when you look at this photo? Breath, breathtaking, solo, serenity, wow, majestic power, Awesome. And so those are some words, ideas, and feelings that I want you all to feel today while you're here with us. It's about power, reflection, focus, the journey. The journey can be exciting. It can be wow. It can also be scary and a little daunting, and we don't know where we're headed. And that's the whole point of storytelling and what we can do here together. So with that, um, I have a few little setting the space, and I know this is not new to educators whatsoever, and you do this every day with the young people that you work with, but we're going to do it here together. So the first one I have is embracing discomfort. Storytelling is not an easy process. If it was, we would all be experts at it and do it every day, and there would be more, millions and millions of books about change maker stories. Um, so what I want would love for you all to embrace the discomfort of telling your story. It's not easy, and we're all here to do it together. And I also encourage you to be open and reflective. I know you've all worked really busy days, you're tired, and this is a time for you to focus in on yourself and think about your journey and look at the bigger picture. Um, the third is to be kind to yourself and others. Sometimes it's hard to find stories. It's, it's hard to articulate what we're trying to feel. Sometimes it comes from a more vulnerable or deeper place. Um, and so I just encourage you to be kind to yourself and give yourself that gratitude for being here today. The fourth is to play along. Um, we're kind of jumping between some different ideas and activities. So I love for you to just join with us. And the fifth is to enjoy yourself. This is not work. This should be enjoyable. So I want you to be here only if you want to be here and that it's fun for you. Wonderful. So with that being said, I'd love for everyone to prep for the session to make sure you have a pen and pencil and um, a piece of paper or your journal. You can take notes throughout, but we'll also send you a bunch of resources at the end. So no no need to frantically write, but we will do a few writing activities. Um, so that way you're just prepared. So if you have a pen and paper, that would be great. All right, while everyone is grabbing that, I'd love to dive into what is the change maker story and what makes it unique and unlike any other stories that we might see. So just so we have a shared definition before we get into the story of what a change maker is, at Ashoka, um, we've learned over the past 40 years from leading social entrepreneurs, leading systems change all around the world, um, of trying to understand like what does it mean to create change and who can create change and how do we do it. And one of the most powerful lessons we have is that anyone obviously can be a change maker from any age, from anywhere, at any time in life. And so for us, a change maker is someone who imagines a new reality takes action and collaborates with others to bring that new reality into the being for the good of others. So in short, it means having an idea or having a dream, forming a team and changing your world, no matter how big or small and doing it to at least benefit yourself and one other person around you. Um, and so again, change makers we see in all across the world at all ages, it's an identity and a part of us. And that identity we wanna put into stories so others can have as well. So in the chat, when you hear the word change maker, I'd love to know who is a change maker that inspires you? Who's the first person that comes to mind when you think of change maker? It could be someone historic, someone you've never met. It could be a friend, someone who's with you right now. I'd love to hear in the chat, who is a change maker that inspires you? We'll give everyone a minute to think about it and some Press that when you're ready. My students, Craig Newmark, Amanda Gorman, my former educator, Brian Jones, my mom, she's first in our college to go to family, Shirley Chisholm, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, wonderful. So we have historic change makers, we have people who we might have never met. We have people who we've met every day and they're a part of our lives. Um, and that's really telling, right? They're of all ages, of all times, of all um, coming from all around the world. And that's really what a change maker is. It can, again, be anyone, anywhere. My second question is, when you think of a change maker, what are some of the qualities you think of? What comes to mind for you? And you can write those in the chat when you're ready. I'm seeing courage, fearless, giving, patience and persistence, creativity, drive, bravery, resiliency, 
vision. Wonderful. Awesome. Um, so my third question is, do you see, so with all those bit qualities you see, do you see change makers amongst your students? Do you see these qualities in change makers amongst your students? I'm getting some maybes, definitely, yes, some, yes, a little. And that's okay. We all have a, there's all, always a spectrum and, and it's all, we're, that's why we're here today is to learn how to activate more change makers and spark them together. A little awesome. And then finally, do you see yourself as a change maker? Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. All right. So we have a lot of confident change makers in the room. I thought I was going to have to do a little motivational speech that educators are change makers. But yes, Amy, you're so right. Hopefully you're here because you want to create change because you're activating others to create change. And that's exactly what a change maker is. And it can come again in many different forms and many different ways of parts of our lives. And so for us, what we see when we talk about the abilities um, is we see four really common abilities and qualities across all change makers. And this is something we try to embed in all of our stories. The first is conscious empathy, which is recognizing what is going on in the lives of others and then thinking and acting with our hearts and our minds. The second is, and we think just a pause there for a second is we think empathy is the foundation of change making is in order to create the change you first have to feel it and have that develop that empathy and then that's when you can take that first step into creating the change you want to see the second is teamwork so how are you enabling everyone to be a player an initiator and leading with inclusivity the third is change making leadership so how are you leading where everyone's able to step up and lead and it's not the classic vertical hierarchy where only one person can lead at a time, but rather a form of leadership where everyone has space to lead and can own different things. And the fourth is that change-making action. So how are you applying critical thinking skills to come up with more effective and sustainable ideas and solutions to address the social problems around you? Again, no matter how big or small, from your school to nationwide to around the world. And for all of these abilities, we have a bunch more resources on the time for change. Um, our resource, all of our resources with our campaign on the Facebook marketplace that will link after this. And we have lots of resources, including time savers and an accelerator resource to help you bring these abilities into your class. And what we're here today is once you're able to have those abilities and focus in is collecting the stories of the young people going on that journey and finding empathy, building teams, leading and creating these really powerful ideas for social change. Wonderful. So now to finally get into stories. Um, stories, I don't feel like I have to, I tell young people this, I tell educators this, I feel like y'all are the two groups that really get it, but obviously humans use, have always used stories to make sense of our chaotic world. Stories not only shape our identities, but they are direct translations of our identities. Um, and so, you know, when we've done lots of research on the power of stories and what it means, we've seen stories in three different ways, light, glue, and a web. So stories that act as light, they help us illuminate the past, see the present more clearly, and look towards the future with a clear vision. Stories also act as glue, they bind together teams, they unite people around a common identity or a shared um, experience, and they're the stories of our collectives. And then stories as webs. These are the stories that connect us to people that we've never met, to experiences we'll never have, um, and create this larger sense where we're able to find these deeper interconnections across communities and societies. Stories as web is the best way to put it, is fairy tales. It's the stories we've told ourselves over time and history, um, and the stories we all know and love. And so change makers use stories for these exact same reasons as glue, as light, and as webs. The first is through empathy building. Since empathy is the foundation for change making, storytelling is such a powerful way to spark empathy and help us step into new experiences. Um, stories also act as glue by building communities. They help unite groups and teams and they help change makers build that collective around them to step up and lead the change they wanna see. And finally, stories act as a web. They help us build movements. Every social movement in history is powered and fueled by stories that motivate us and compel us to act, to think critically and to question the status quo. And stories are the most powerful way we can shape the world around us is what we think. And so, um, you know, 
we all need these stories and we're really diving into like what stories are your students craving? I would love to know and pause for a second of are your students craving stories of empathy, stories of community, stories of movement building? I'd love to see in the chat, which stories do you feel like your students are craving or is it all three? Seeing empathy, that's resonating for Linda. Movement, people wanting to understand their place. Empathy and kindness is resonating with a lot of people. Wonderful. So, you know, when we think about all this, oh, I love this. So people are still reflecting the experience of all three, community building. So what does a change maker story look like? I'm doing not a good job explaining stories because I'm telling you what a story is versus showing you. Um, and so I'm really excited to introduce two change makers with me, AJ and Mateen. Um, Mateen and I go back a few years now because he was an Ashoka Young change maker in one of our programs for a project he started in high school. Now he's off to college doing more change making projects and experiences and has built his team even wider. Um, and so I'm going to give AJ and Mateen the floor to share a little bit more about their change maker journey starting when they were in their teen years and where it's led them now and the role that educators played in that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop sharing my screen and welcome Mateen and AJ to introduce themselves. And if y'all could just share your stories with us and any questions you all have in the chat, um, just feel free to throw them in the chat and we'll do a little Q&A after they share out. So Mateen and AJ, I'll pass it over to y'all. I see Shonda Malone. Hello, hello. Um, happy Tuesday. And thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Riley. Uh, really, really excited to keep, be here. Uh, my name is Mateen. I am a co-founder of Equal and currently the chair of our board. And I'll pass it to AJ to give a quick intro about himself. Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. Um, my name is AJ Ackleson. I am the program manager here at Equal and a former uh, Chicago Public School student. So any CPS teachers here? Hey. <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah, so you might be thinking, uh, what are the two of these uh, individuals doing on this call? And Riley kind of gave a little bit of an introduction, but I'll kind of start with a story about how I got in uh, to the social impact space, um, which really revolved around education. So this is a great fit. Wonder why I'm here. Um, but essentially when I was in middle school, I took a community service class that was all about just doing something positive for your community. And my co-founder had taken the same exact class as me. And, uh, you know, we both wanted to do, uh, I had done a project uh, to support a local foster care shelter. She had done one to support an animal care shelter. And afterwards we both were like, hey, that was pretty fun. Uh, we should do something more like that. Um, and we were like, okay, why not? We're middle schoolers. We have a ton of time on our hand and we don't even do our homework anyway. So we might as well do something fun. Uh, so she uh, and I decided that we wanted to do a community service project to support students um, or to support people experiencing homelessness. So essentially we wanted to package up hygiene kits um, to then pass out to people in our community. Um, so we uh, found this funding opportunity through one of our teachers who ran the same class uh, that the school was hosting a big fundraiser. It was about $1,000 that we could win. And the student body was going to be able to choose uh, which charity they were going to donate to. So we wanted to be one of the charities in the mix. So uh, we kind of campaigned around our school and we said, hey, we're this you know, group of students who are, uh, you know, go to the same school as you guys and we want to do the service project and, you know, we should get the funding. We ended up getting the funding um, and then the school kind of hit us over the head with a little like, you know, you guys are kind of young, you also aren't a legitimate organization and we kind of feel a little bit uneasy about the whole, uh, you know, youth uh, being involved in this kind of space. So that's a note of something not to do. Um, but essentially they were like, you know, you have to be a legitimate organization for us to give you funding. So Alyssa and I, my co-founder kind of sat there and said, okay, what is this legitimate organization? So we Googled, what is the IRS? Um, and then we Googled what is a uh, tax exemption. And then we knew nonprofit was something good. So then we sat in the cafeteria and we had ended up filing for a, a nonprofit tax exemption. Uh, and then we got it. And then a few weeks later, we had gotten the money from our school and uh, we started every single Saturday passing out hygiene products uh, to people out on the streets. And our uh, eighth grader, who uh, was the one who taught the class that we first were inspired by, ended up uh, giving us her social security number so we could fill out all the tax forms and stuff with it. Um, and she kind of became our like champion of um, allowing us to do this. And then we 
uh, continued to do that for uh, a long time. Um, and then by my senior year of high school, we were hosting benefit galas. We had distributed over 50,000 products to people out on the streets in Colorado. We had over a hundred volunteers um, and we were really rocking the show. And we felt like we had an excellent momentum and we kind of wanted to take things to the next level. Uh, we started to learn about this bigger issue of students experiencing homelessness. And we were a youth led organization. So we felt like this was a space we could do more in. Um, and that's when we uh, officially kind of made the transition over to Equal. Um, so now I'm a freshman in college. I took a gap year. So this was, you know, I've been doing this for almost six years now. Um, and uh, yeah, we moved into working with students experiencing homelessness. And I'll kind of take a pause there and I'll maybe let AJ actually share a little bit about our programs and what we do here at Equal, um, which uh, will be hopefully exciting as well. And then I can kind of loop back if there's more questions. Absolutely. So uh, Equal is dedicated to leveling the playing field for uh, access to post-secondary education uh, for students facing uh, homelessness. And we have a couple of programs. Um, first, we have a scholarship program where we do directly fund scholars who are impacted by housing insecurity, um, ensuring that they have access and breaking down the barriers to post-secondary education, um, as we strongly believe that education is the pathway out of homelessness and poverty. Um, and then our other program is our chapters program. So we are on a mission to uh, engage young activists and young change makers uh, across the country who want to make a difference in their community. So through our chapters program, we partner with schools, uh, community organizations, or youth that just want to independently run a chapter within their community. And um, we give them all the tools and autonomy that they would need to enact change. So uh, they establish a chapter and we provide them with educational material, um, marketing material for educational campaigns and uh, all the things they might need for service projects to be hosted in their schools or in their community organizations. And um, we are on a mission to double our chapters this year to just increase our impact in the country, um, trying to activate students in every state, in every city uh, to, to make a change in their community and um, be a vessel for youth to uh, have the autonomy to, to be a change maker. Um, so we're very excited and uh, we are in a big growth phase thanks to Mateen and, uh, and her, his co-founder Alyssa's uh, brilliant idea. It's awesome. Yeah, many, uh, I don't think we exactly knew when we were in eighth grade that this is what we would be doing. And um, <laughs> it's been very exciting, um, uh, especially this past two years with Equal, kind of seeing the growth, uh, which I can kind of highlight a little bit. So Equal, we've done about uh, or committed to over $100,000 in scholarships for youth experiencing homelessness to attain post-secondary education. Um, we have, how many chapters, AJ, are we at? Uh, I think we're close to 30 and we're looking to double them. So 60 by the end of this calendar year. Whoop, whoop. Um, <laughs> we've had really impressive reach on social media, uh, kind of garnering uh, support from youth all across the country. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as our administration, we've really established our board of directors and um, AJ's our second full-time hire. We had one this past November and we're actually hiring again uh, for uh, another position. So um, it's been really, really exciting to see this growth. And, um, you know, I kind of will uh, move into the Q&A after this, if that's okay with you, Riley, but um, essentially really would highlight the importance of uh, how our, really our middle school teacher inspired us and kind of pushed us to think out of the box, do something that we were passionate about. And I think what was most important about her role in all of this was she kind of harnessed the creativity and the excitement that we had um, and really didn't have us focus too much on, um, you know, if we're really young or the fact that, yeah, a lot of the odds are stacked against us, but that we had a really good idea and we had a, a drive to do it and we had the time to do it and we had the privilege to do it. So we should have done it. Um, and then, you know, uh, here we are many years later. So uh, I would encourage as much as possible uh, when students come to you with ideas or when they want to make a difference to kind of uh, be that one voice that's very open-minded about it and just uh, kind of make it seem like it's not uh, going to be the hardest thing in the world to enact uh, because they can figure it out. And, and Riley knows countless uh, numbers of youth who are doing very similar things across the country, so, and the world. Thank you both so much for sharing more about Equal. Um, I'd love any questions you have for them in the chat about their story, but to start us off, 
I love the success today. Mateen, this feels like your third or fourth iteration of your idea. Um, and so, and you've been on this journey for now, you've said six years. I'm so curious, like what, how did you, how did you decide on house communities and homelessness and why did you stick with it? You know, why, and why did you, Alyssa, stick with this idea versus try something else in your journey? And, you know, what, how did you connect with this issue? Yeah, I think um, part of it was a cliche, honestly, in the very beginning of like uh, Alyssa and I had just, this was an issue in Colorado who was uh, kind of the hotspot as well in, in the downtown area for a housing crisis um, and kind of realizing how many people were out on the streets. And it's just such a, uh, you know, heartbreaking thing because we see it every single day, but we don't really, uh, you know, it's very easy to look at these days now that we are very like vaccinated against, you know, human suffering. So um, I think Alyssa and I just generally gravitated toward that issue and wanted to do something meaningful. Um, but, you know, we also started with a little bit of an assumption that, oh, if you are experiencing homelessness, all you need is shampoo and conditioner and some food and you'll be well on your way. Um, but what I'm really glad we did in the beginning phases was uh, taking the time to talk to people who were experiencing homelessness. So every time we would go downtown and pass out our kits and our meals, uh, we would spend a few hours just talking to people and hearing their stories. And I think that was what informed uh, how the program has changed over the years and how we've kind of evolved into working with students. I mean, learning about first that homelessness can really happen to anyone, that homelessness is a housing problem, not a drug uh, or alcohol problem, um, and that there are a lot of issues that are wrapped around homelessness as well. Um, you know, a lot of times we try and say, you know, it's drugs and alcohol, domestic violence, things like that. So it's true, but all of those happen outside of our society anyways. But what homelessness is, is a housing problem. So uh, we figured it's kind of the first step towards tackling a lot of the other social issues uh, that are, you know, around as well is uh, get people the ability to have their basic needs met. Um, and then we can start to, you know, head on tackle other issues. Um, and at the same time, uh, we started, you know, passing out a lot of products to uh, unhoused youth communities. And then really what connected, I think, equal uh, and the final trajectory I think we're on is the fact that I'm um, a freshman in college and half of our scholars are freshmen, sophomores in college as well. Um, so that we have a unique opportunity here that not only do scholars call our team members to say, hey, I, I'm going to be starting, you know, at BC this fall and I just wanted to get some financial aid questions out of the way, but also like, hey, Mateen, how are you moving into school? And like, what are you packing with you? And like, what are you nervous about? And things like that. But I have the opportunity to talk to people who are my own age and support people who are my own age. And I think I understand them uh, and what they're going through just as well um, as maybe, you know, someone who's been out of college for quite some time. So that for youth, by youth piece uh, was in, it, it really incredibly powerful. And I think that's what excites chapter members that it's not some distant community we're talking about it's people that are in your classrooms uh that we want to support and that could be your friends and you wouldn't even know um so that's kind of where uh we landed there i love that and a question we have from jenna is um so in middle school and high school how is your experience getting other people on board right like now you're hiring people now you have a big team but i assume it was probably not like that at the beginning. So could you tell us more about what it was like to build that team and how to activate others to join you in your mission? Yeah, I uh, talked to everyone and uh, anyone I knew about Equal in my school. I um, pretty much, I think it's 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 really like grassroots organizing and just uh, owning the, the brand. I mean, I, I'm wearing my Equal Vest right now and walk around, uh, you know, whatever the youth groups at school had community service opportunities, I always put equal in the mix. Um, a lot of it was just my friends. Uh, I would say, hey, you know, uh, I'm doing this service project, bring you and your parents and, and some family friends and come volunteer with us. And then, you know, they would introduce me to a few more people who wanted to do it. And then from there, um, also using social media, uh, kind of posting all the things we were doing. And then Teens from across the state would say, hey, um, I like what you guys are doing. I saw you're on Instagram. Uh, can we come, you know, volunteer with you? Um, so I think it was very grassroots and it was Alyssa and I and then, you know, those team members and everyone from there just, you know, talking about equal with everyone that they knew. And uh, I think we were very accessible uh, to young people because reaching out to, I think a lot of times you go to um, you know, volunteer at soup kitchens and things like that. It's a little bit of an intimidating space and there's really assigned job roles and things like that. 
not really with how we started. It was just very, um, you know, we need help. There's no red tape here. Come join us. Um, and I think our chapters program really models the same exact thing of let youth be the ones who champion other youth into uh, to making an impact. I love that. Thank you for sharing of how persistent and resilient you were in that effort. I know it wasn't easy. Um, Elizabeth had a question about she really appreciates the chapter model that you have. And um, and so how powerful for middle schoolers, you know, she just thinks how powerful for middle schoolers is to see this. Um, she wants you to talk to your students, which we can definitely make the connections at the end. Mateen and AJ will share a little bit more about how educators can get plugged into your program. Um, but when did you decide, her question is, when did you decide to scale outside of your high school? Like, when did you decide this isn't just for me and my friends, but rather I want to make this a chapter model and it to be for other people? And what helped you make that decision to go bigger? Yeah, I think we wanted to, and um, AJ, please uh, jump in at any time uh, with, you know, the specifics about the chapters as AJ lives, eats, breathes chapters all day, every day now. Um, but the, the concept of chapters really derived from how successful our grassroots organizing was in Colorado, that using social media and kind of using young people as the faces and the, the kind of champions of change was actually very attractive to other young people. Um, and then also realizing how powerful like the digital age is, is like we can connect with young people all across the nation. I mean, if you think about it, I think that our generation, especially Gen Z has a little bit of a stronger national connective structure because we watch and share the same memes on social media. Uh, we use the same lingo because we're connected in this, this overarching brow. So it's actually really not that hard for me to connect with youth when I'm in Cambridge, to connect with youth in San Diego, to Dallas, to you know, kind of everywhere. So realizing how uh, connected our youth um, kind of structure was and how quickly it would be to, instead of me trying to talk to as many teachers as possible and saying, you should encourage your students to start a chapter, was to talk to the students directly and say, hey, we're a youth-led nonprofit. We're only looking for youth. We don't hire you know, uh, adults to start chapters. We want people your age. You meet all the qualifications because you're a student. Um, and we want you to kind of join in on our movement. And it felt really accessible. And I think a lot, that's why a lot of young people come in uh, and are really excited about it. So um, yeah, the, and the impact that we can have uh, when it's not just in one concentrated area. I mean, what we try and do is connect all of our chapters together. Um, you know, we have an app that kind of houses everyone. Uh, so youth in, you know, Florida can also meet youth in Oregon and in uh, Colorado and in New York. So it's also like you're part of this big equal community, uh, which I think youth are really, really excited about. Um, and yes, AJ sent some flyers and stuff about the chapters program. So um, please do promote to your students. But I think that uh, this, the question was more about the, the scaling, but yeah. Thanks so much. I love to hear all that. Um, and we will hear more from AJ and Mateen at the end, and they'll be sticking around hopefully to join us in the breakout room right now to keep talking and sharing stories. Um, but what we're going to go to now is I love now that we've heard Mateen AJ's story, and they're just one example of millions around the world of young people leading change at all different scales. I'd love for you all to take a minute while we're creating these breakout rooms for you to think about where are examples of young people stepping up to lead in your community, in your school, they might be from the past, they might be happening right now, or maybe there are stories you're like, oh, they're always right there, but I wish they could take the next step and I'm trying to figure out how to make that story happen. So this is time a little bit to brag about your current and past students and communities and just think where are you seeing change making in your own um, spaces and communities and classrooms. So I'm going to throw the questions in the chat and throw you all into breakout groups for about 10 minutes to share out. And this feels you know, very straightforward to educators, but the, we need to focus first on what is the primary goal of telling your story? Is it to help create more impact? Is it to recruit more team members, share lessons learned, even just get started and figure out, or if you're in a rut and figuring out for yourself, how do I keep going and what is my story and the journey I'm on? Um, and so there's four types of stories that we see. And of course there's overlap, like all stories and why we tell stories, but we, if we could bucket it, we would in these four different ways. The first is the inspirational story. This is all about you and your identity and that change maker journey you're on and how you're bridging your personal story with the journey that you're embarking on. 
The second is the issue story. This is really common for change makers who are trying to bring awareness to a social issue that people aren't seeing every day um, or trying to shed a different light into it, right? Like what we just heard from Mateen and AJ of, you know, they started more intimately seeing the details of an underlying root causes of homelessness. And so they can frame their story in an issue-based story about going deeper into that topic and exploring what it really means and why it's happening and reframing narratives around it. The third is the impact story. This is the story we hear a lot in the TED Talks when people are sharing their, their impact, what they've learned, um, the, what they want to share with the world and what they've done. Um, you know, it's really what people have achieved in their vision together and celebratory stories a lot of the time. And the fourth is the insight story. These are those introspective, really reflective stories where people are sharing their insights in a very vulnerable and authentic manner. So they're getting into the weeds of, you know, what were the challenges? What were the barriers? How do they feel during it? When are all the times they wanted to give up and what kept them going? Um, and so that is where we get into the insight story. And so we see this in a bunch of different ways. I have four examples of stories of young people from around the world. Um, but for example, an inspirational story. One of my favorite books is called Dear World. Um, and it's written by an 11 year old when she was experiencing this, uh, the Syrian war and she was a Syrian refugee. And it's her, it's her mom gave her access to her phone and made her help her make a Twitter account. And she was tweeting out to the world what was happening in her community and neighborhood because she didn't understand why there wasn't this international response to help the crisis she was facing. And so what her and her mother did is turned it into a collections of stories, memories, letters, tweets, um, documenting their lived experiences and how they try to create change around them. And they've shared and created this narrative together with their family. Um, another example of the impact story is there's a podcast that we support called The Genius Generation, and we support um, bringing in young people specifically focused in STEM and creating change within STEM education or having STEM-based ideas for environmental change. Um, and they go on this podcast and share their impact and what they've done and how they've accomplished it and the messiness of the journey and the advice they have for other young people looking to create change. But it's driven with this impact frame of here's what I've done and this is the power that young people have to create change for the planet, for their communities, for education. And so again, the best way to really exemplify these types of stories is not to tell you about them, but to show you. And so I have um, some short stories of four different educators from across the country um, who are all connected to um, their schools and play a role in education in very different ways. And they've each created change um, in their own unique way through their journey. And so we're gonna listen to a few for sh short few tidbits from Mona, Karen, Donna, and Erin about how they've created change with these different lenses of the inspirational story, the impact story, the insight story. Um, so I'm going to reshare my screen so you can all see the video and we can have sound. Wonderful. Meet Mona, a history teacher from Toledo, Ohio, who created and spread award-winning training to equip students and school personnel to combat youth human trafficking. I try to look at societal issues through the lens of my students. It changes how students see where their power lies, how their civic voice and personal stories very much matter. If we teach students to use their own life experiences to discuss issues that they face, then we as teachers are helping to provide them a well-rounded education. Empowering students to get involved was the best choice that I could have made because students need to be the voice for their peers. I want students to be the change makers we know they can be. I never work in isolation because when you work in the educational system, it is about collaboration and teamwork. I always try to engage with teachers and students on all of the projects I embark upon. Meet Karen, a head custodian from Mount Olive, Alabama, who recognized that switching over to green cleaning products was a powerful way to support student health and created that change in her school. One day I saw there was an opening in the teacher leader program. I said to myself, I want to do this, even if I am the custodian. I've always been concerned with the environment. Aerosol sprayers were placed in our hallways, and this was triggering a little boy's asthma. He would have to go to the nurse to use his inhaler, and this touched my heart. All the aerosols and harsh chemicals I was using was not helping my kids or myself. 
feeling led to do something, I switched to green cleaning products. I never set out to change the world, just a little corner. I would love for this to take off and to help other students in other schools. Meet Donna, a school social worker from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who transformed the culture of her school and created a safe place where LGBTQ students could find their own voice and step into their leadership. Empowering my students to become change makers is how I think of myself as a change maker. Students have to understand that they have a role and a stake in society. If they don't have an opportunity to say, hey, this is what I think, then we're missing a huge opportunity to make our society a better society. It's important to step back ourselves and allow things to change because part of being a change maker is knowing when the students identify changes to listen to their input and help them figure out how to get their input heard. To me, being a leader is often about being more walking side by side with someone than it is about telling them what to do. Meet Erin, a math and science teacher from Baltimore, Maryland, who created a summer camp that cultivates academic, social, emotional learning and joy to come to the summer slide. Society now changes so much, things are set up different week by week. I talk to my students and tell them, you have to be able to critically think on your feet and be able to identify a situation and say to yourself, hey, how can I change the situation? Or what can I do to make the situation better? My personal belief is that students need all experiences, both inside and outside the classroom, to make them as effective change agents as possible. When you talk to your students, let them know, when you go outside these walls, it's your job to mold how society's going to look. It's your job to speak up for justice or injustice. It's your job when you see somebody who can't speak up for themselves. It's your job to step in there and try to do your hardest to speak up and advocate for the next person. So one way we can always do this is by making the classroom an environment that's a team, not just one leader. And there are several leaders in my classroom. What's your personal change? Like these AFT change makers, how can you increase? All right. Sorry, it's kind of a second too late, but we did this partner video in partnership with AFT a few years ago. So that was why there's a little plug there at the end and I pressed stop a little too fast. Um, so with that being said, um, what I would love for us to do is take a moment and think about the changes that we're seeing within ourselves and within our peers at work, not just our students now, but with other educators, with us as educators. Um, maybe it's, again, things you've done in the past, maybe it's things you're doing now, or maybe it's something you're like, oh, this is the story I wish I was on too, and this is the idea I have or the vision I hope to create. Um, and so before that, though, I wanted to really quickly share out before we go into groups again, how these four stories map to the larger um, picture of what I just shared. Um, and so, of course, there was overlap between stories. There was a lot of, um, but we kind of, you know, we saw Mona's with the impact story about, um, we saw Aaron with insights about how he, with his um, bridging the summer gap, um, how, what insights he learned through that journey and how he was acting with his peers. We heard from Karen at the issue of how to bring environmentally friendly products into her school. And that wasn't something she was aware of. So again, these stories intertwine and they're unique in their own ways, um, but there's different motives for why we share stories and what value it brings to us and those in our, we wanna hear it in our audiences. And so I would love to know out of those narratives we just heard, which narrative stood out to you? Which educator story really resonated with you? Which one were you like, oh, that is what I'm seeing or feeling or experiencing in my classroom? In the chat, I'd love to hear any specific educators that stories that really resonated deeply with you. And I'll put their names back up. We have Aaron's story really resonated. A lot of people had Aaron's story really resonate with them and the initiative he founded with Magic, uh, Magic Minds. Donna's experience that came from both this personal, um, probably pro personal or the story she was seeing in her friends or her families and bringing it to her school. Karen's of trying to keep going green and that, that journey she went on. 
Karen's was really, yeah, I agree. Karen's was relatable, right? It was all about creating a small change and, and her recognizing that this could have a huge impact and it could grow and scale. And it doesn't matter how big or small the change is. It's, she's still a change maker no matter what. Um, okay, great. Awesome. So I'd love for us to take a moment and chat a little bit again about, you know, when is the first time you felt powerful to create change like Aaron, like Karen, like Donna, um, where are the adult change makers in your school, your workplace, your community, and what are they doing? What examples are you seeing? Maybe it's in yourself, maybe it's in your colleagues, maybe it's in your leadership. Um, I'd love for you all to just discuss some examples that you're seeing. Um, so we threw the questions in the chat um, and we're actually gonna throw it all into new breakout groups this time so you can get some different experiences. Um, awesome, okay, throwing you all into rooms now and you have about five, seven minutes. Um, we'll play around with time, but I'll give you a warning. Welcome back, just let everyone join us back in about 10 seconds. Wonderful, okay, everyone is jumping back in and using their Last few seconds till they're forced out. Awesome. So now that we've talked a little bit about stories we want to tell, stories we're excited to share with the world, I want to talk a little bit about stories we want to avoid and how we can reframe those narratives that I think will really resonate um, with this audience. And so the first one I want to talk about is the lone hero story. This is the classic superhero one person at a time and one person saved the day and saved everyone and we needed them and we depended on them. And it's a story that single-handedly saw as one person solving a problem. Um, the issue with these stories is although they're great movies, Marvel does a great job at them, um, they're not necessarily very inclusive or empowering if we're not seeing the nuances of the team, the challenges and the struggle. Um, we'll think more of like the adventure movie or the team story. We wanna share stories of teams, of groups, of families, classrooms, and communities. Um, you, of course, are the main character of your own story. Your students are the main character of their story or your scholars, they're all their own main character, but no good story is a solo story. We all have this, um, these people, these experiences, who people who support us, people who tell us no, people who pick us up when we're down, they're um, all part of that bigger story story. And so what we really try to do with change maker stories is reframe the narrative to be about the collective, the team story, even if it's just one other person and starting small. The second story we try to focus on avoiding is the deficit story. Um, I think this really resonates, it seems, with educators of this is the story where we're defining people based on what they lack, what they need. Um, and it reproduces the harmful societal narratives that we see that some people have less to offer than others. This probably is common when you hear about all of the times like kids who can't do this or can't do that. Um, and they have to be defined by where they came from. Instead, what we really try to do is reframe the story to be about assets and what everyone has to offer. Again, you are the main character of your own story. You're not defined by anything but yourself. And so we want to focus on people's abilities, their contributions, their opportunities. Of course, these stories can have the nuances of your life and your lived experiences and the challenges you face, but we really want to prioritize how do we focus on um, what everyone has to offer and how they can control and shape their own narratives. And the final story that we try to avoid is the standard success story. This is the um, in social impact and a lot of times in our professional sense, we see this as about being really data driven and numbers driven and quantifying a story's importance or success based on the number of lives saved, the number of people reached. Um, in our everyday lives, it might be the standard version of success is, you know, those preconceived notions of success, like a very clear path to college, or um, maybe it's you know, you have, are your valedictorian or you're the team captain, right? Like, yes, of course, those are wonderful and awesome, but not everyone needs to fit a mold. And there's not one path to success, especially, you know, in those early years of your journey. And so we really try to focus on the transformational story. So not defining people by statistics, by their grades, by the number of lives they've saved, but really focusing on how do you end up at a different point from where you started? And what did you learn along the way? 
who joined you, and what did it mean to find that power? And so I love, um, I know I went through those fast, but I want to be mindful of our time and really focus. Um, I'm curious, and since we have a smaller group here of, you know, which type of narratives would resonate most deeply with your students and which narratives aren't you seeing? I'd love in the chat if you could throw out or unmute and share out of, you know, which of these narratives, is it the standard success story? Is it the deficit story? Is it the lone hero story? Which narratives are you seeing a lot of and which ones do you want to see more of? The team story, the asset story, and the transformational story. I'd love to hear from people in the chat or um, just in, uh, or you can unmute yourself and share. Yeah, Chris, I see your hand raised. So I'm really interested in um, the deficit stories. So much has been focused around learning loss and what have our children lost during this pandemic and as we're trying to come back and how do we you know, catch them up? And instead of let's stop looking at what may be considered a loss, let's consider what we gained. Um, how much more knowledgeable we are and how much more connected we are because of Zoom, right? <laughs> because, and how my students are like tech savvy beyond belief because they had to quickly learn how to navigate all of those different um, tools to be able to, to learn when we were, were virtual. So um, I think that deficit story and the reframing it to the asset stories is something really, really powerful to help students navigate and build resilience. See how great you are and not worry about how much someone may say we didn't, you know, gain or we lost. Thank you for sharing. I think the pandemic is such a good example of it. it's defined by loss and what we lack. And yes, the framing of what it is is important, but how do we reframe it to be about what, we, what we've what we learned, what we've contributed, what we realized about ourselves, right? It's pro promoted mental health in new ways that I don't think we would have gotten as fast. It's promoted hybrid working and um, different types of learning, different paths. I think it's opened a lot of doors for people to take a year off and, and to have a year to themselves. Like I think it's created, right? just what you're saying is these other opportunities that can be a part of the story while keeping, um, while also bringing in the reality of what the problem was, but putting it in a way that's helpful. And I, a lot of people agree with you on that one. And people are, it seems like Elizabeth's so high, tired of hearing the lone hero story. Um, yeah, and people not being able to see themselves in the story. I think that's a really powerful point too, is we want to show stories where people can identify with and have that deep connection. And not every story is going to do that, but that's why we need to tell as many stories as we can and find stories from every part of our classrooms, our schools, and our communities to be able to represent as many voices, perspectives, and lived experiences as possible, um, and how everyone can have that story too. Yeah, I love that these experiences, people connecting with the lone heroes and coming from deep pockets, right? Like there's, you know, there's so much more to the story and we need to get to the vulnerability, the authenticity and the humanity, which is about collectives and teams. And so with that, I have a quick little activity for us. Um, and what I would love to do is, um, oh, sorry, is think a little bit more about what stories are you missing from your school and I want you to take a minute and think about in groups where can stories be told you know what stories are getting under your skin but what stories are firing you up and how could you be sharing those stories whether it's in your your programs your classrooms your assemblies your communications um, you know where are these stories missing and where can they be told so we're going to throw you out into a short breakout group for about um, five minutes again. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. I know a little short in those final conversations, um, but I wanted to make sure I leave time for covering the resources and tools that we have for you all. Um, so just to share is we'll share again after this, but I know you have access to the first book collection and the stories and books, and I'll share those and plug it in again. But we also, Ashoka, have a lot of nonfiction stories of young change makers that are written by them or with them. Um, we have a collection of 250 around the world, as well as 80 videos and a bunch of different languages and social and geographic contexts. So any social issue, um, any probably part of the world, we ideally have a story for it and we're constantly growing our collection. So we'll share with you those links um, 
in a follow-up email after this workshop. And I also have some personalized worksheets and reflection guides that cover the narratives and reframing the narrative, the types of stories, and a guide young people in you can do um, to think a little bit more deeply about the stories that you want to share in your own personal narratives that you can just copy and paste the questions or use the reflection sheet that we have. Um, so as a final thought and a send off to everyone before I wrap this up, I wanted to see in the chat, what is one way you want to bring change maker stories to your school, your program, or your community? I'd love to see in the chat, one way you want to bring change maker stories to your school, your program, or your community. And I know people are probably still thinking on this and ideating of how they want to share those stories and where they want to go, whether it's in their materials, the books, um, the videos. Yes, of course, we will share everything in a detailed follow-up after this so you have more examples of young people and social entrepreneurs and adults who've led change. Revamping your library collection so young people can read more stories. Conversation, I think that's a, such a powerful thing is how do you just get people talking to each other and thinking critically like this. Writing their own stories and being able to share that with their friends, their parents, their family, um, themselves over time. Getting student voices out there. I love it through action. Yes, I totally agree, Linda. S start with the books for inspiration, follow it with journaling, and follow that with action. I love the three-step approach and the three action steps you have leaving this. Wonderful. Um, we're also going to be sharing with you, and I'll just throw it in the chat right now and in an email, a nomination form, where if you see these stories in your classrooms, in your schools, we would love to learn from them and see them. We're going to be featuring some stories through a campaign we'll be leading called Change Makers Like Me um, and some other things we'll be doing with our Time for Change initiative. And so we'd love to feature the stories that are happening in your everyday lives, in your classrooms, um, and through your students. And finally, if there's any resources you need, there's books, we have um, guides, again, uh, materials for both curriculum, activities, and stories on the Facebook, first book, sorry, first book marketplace um, for you to access and enjoy. And all of our um, downloadable resources and tools for educators are free and open for you to use with your colleagues and for yourselves to spark empathy, to build, help young people build teams, um, to step into leaders and to create that powerful action. So again, just as a signing off note, you know, the first story we tell ourselves is the story that we, the way we want to live our lives, right? And, you know, stories shape our thoughts and their memories and they change the way we live our lives. So if more young people were sharing stories and reading stories of change makers and seeing them in their everyday lives, how many more young people would be able to step up and find their own power to create their own story too? So with that, um, I'm gonna pass it back over to Mateen and AJ to share some final things they wanted to share with us about their program and initiative and how educators can get involved. And we'll also be sharing you their contact information in case you wanna plug in with them um, personally. So I'm gonna pass it over to Mateen and AJ for some final thoughts on how educators can get involved with e Equal. AJ, I'll let you take the stage. Love it, thank you so much. Um, Friends, thank you so much for this fabulous, fabulous moment together. Hearing your stories, being able to share our story has been so fabulous. Um, we mentioned this before, but Equal is on a huge mission to enact change across the country, um, specifically with our chapters program, uh, establishing chapters, uh, youth-led chapters in schools, in community organizations around the country. We are looking to double our numbers this year, and it really comes down to educators and administrators just like you are our key to growth. Um, I'm going to reshare the flyer and the one sheet that I had shared earlier, um, but I would love it. I think both of us would love it if you would be able to share this opportunity with your students. Um, if you are in the elementary sphere, share with your fellow high school educators um, in your district and help us spread the word about how we can make a big impact on our unhoused community members in every state across the country. Um, 
The flyer and the one sheet are intended to share more information with teachers and school administrators. Um, it discusses the ins and outs of the chapter program. And this opportunity is just a really fabulous career and college readiness uh, program as one of Equal's missions is to develop the next generation of leaders uh, for social change. So please share this information with high school students, college students, your principals or other uh, school administrators. Um, if you have any partnering organizations that you work with at your school would be fabulous. Because um, together we can make a difference in student homelessness and access to post-secondary education. Um, so I'll put those flyers in one more time if you want to share them. And you can always reach out to us uh, at uh, chapters at equal.org. And I'll put that in the chat as well. And uh, thank you so much for this time, everyone. It's been so fabulous. Thanks so much, Mateen and AJ, again, for joining us, sharing their stories, being vulnerable, and getting us excited about what the power that young people have to create change in middle school, high school, and beyond. So, th and thank you all for taking the time and space to join us. We really appreciate it. Mateen, anything you want to share to close this? Yeah, story? I just wanted to say thank you as well for having us, and um, uh, we were really excited. And please don't be shy to reach out. We are always excited uh, to meet new people and, and talk about anything in the education space. So uh, don't be strangers. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Jenna, anything you want to share before we close out? No, I just appreciate all of you and your time. Thank you so much to our young change makers extraordinaire. I'm sure your inboxes will be whatever the equivalent is of your phones ringing off the hook now after this. <laughs> don't tempt an educator with an opportunity to inspire their kids. So thank you all. Um, stay tuned for more from Time for Change, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.